All right, let's get it. This is Nap Nose Buffalo, and uh, this is our first episode on YouTube officially. We're we're not a live show on YouTube, but we are now going to have all of our shows going live as a podcast and on YouTube. So I, that's I, that's pretty big news for us, Casey. Yeah, so I'm excited, um, and I know my face never shows a lot of emotion on here. Yeah, you so look just, like you look like you're excited. Yeah, it it always shows like I'm pissed off, um, but it's not that. Like I am, I'm super excited about it um, because sometimes at work, I'll we have a smart TV, and I'll randomly put on Buffalo Fanatics and be like, oh, whoa, who, well, how did that get there? So I can't wait to do that to my own face. Um, so super excited <laughs> about that. I'm super excited to read the comments about how dumb we both are. Um, that is exciting in its own right. I'm super excited to see how many uh, like thumbs down we get if we Ooh. get any. I'm like I'm really hoping we don't because obviously the more thumbs up we get, uh, the the better the video does yeah. eventually. Yeah. But like we're I'm we're bound to, we're bound to get some <laughs> thumbs down, right? Like it, it's a guarantee. At some point, we what are going to get some thumbs down. What if we became the most hated YouTube show on YouTube? I I don't think that's going to be difficult for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know, baby. It's going to be very difficult. A baby by Justin Bieber had that had that beat for a long time. Um, but let's let's get into some things because we have a long episode, and you know we, we can both rant for a while. Um, excited about YouTube. Excited about showing off uh, my mini colorful shirts when I come on. I'm going to buy a Hawaiian shirt here soon, and just wear different Hawaiian shirts while I'm on here. Um, I don't know if that's my sort of thing, but I'm gonna try it out. Yeah, I guess we gotta we gotta figure out what our thing I gotta is figure, then. figure yeah. out what's going on. Casey, um, did you do you have anything big happen to you this week? Yeah, so I had a couple of big things happen to me this week. Uh, first of all, I met my best friend about halfway. He lives in Kentucky. I live in Tennessee. We met about halfway, um, and we had dinner together. You know, me, my wife, uh, him, and his wife. Uh, I consider him like family. I've known him since we were like three years old. Um, he's he's like a brother to me. Um, she's like my sister-in-law. I love them to death. Um, we went to a restaurant of their choice um, in a college town, right? This restaurant, um, good food, by the way, good food. I'll, I'll give it that. Awful atmosphere for someone who is an old man at heart. <laughs> they were, they cranked the karaoke and I looked at my best friend and I had to scream and I said, imagine losing your voice in a sit down restaurant. It was so loud. The The waitresses was carrying around the microphone singing at the top of her lungs, um, show tunes, uh, different different songs as well, uh, outside of show tunes. Um, did you post was, the, the video? Awful. Did you post the video on Twitter? Yeah, I couldn't remember yeah. where I saw it specifically, yeah. but the, I that was I loved it. I, it. It did not do it justice. It was much louder in the actual restaurant. It was awful. Um, it was bad, dude. It was really bad. And like they were going to table and like you could see on the crowd's face, like the the people who were eating, you could see how pissed they were that this was going on. <laughs> like no one in the restaurant was like, crank that shit up, right? No one was like that. It was like they absolutely hated everything to do with this. But you know what? Credit to the staff. Credit to that staff there because they were going all out like it was a party, right? They were enjoying their time there at work. And I get it. I've been at, I've been at a job. You're cranking out eight, nine, ten plus hours at work, right? Go go find things that are enjoyable for you. It just wasn't enjoyable for me while I was eating a burger called the Gambler, which you know is is I, when I saw it on the menu, I was like, oh, that's mine. Like I gotta it was, get it. They, so they just pretty much named that after you. Yeah, they did. And you know what's funny is it's a burger that I make here at the house all the time with with my wife. So she was like, that's literally the same burger you make at home. And I was like, ah, oh, no, it's great, isn't it? So um, that happened with me, um, and it was awful. Um, it was bad. <laughs> I I I absolutely did not like it. Um, <clears throat> Outside of that, I don't think – did you have anything big happen to you this week? I don't think it was a lot. No, you know, it was just a nice, relaxing week, you know. Nothing yeah. nothing happened, yeah. Nothing big. No, all right, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I got engaged this weekend. So that was what? that was pretty awesome. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, oh my pretty God, excited about that. I know, um, I know, I know. It's crazy. I don't want to, like, put a lot of credit on me. Like I don't, I, We're not going to put any credit on you. I, I don't want like, to. Now, like zero, literally zero Kyle, credit. 0.0% on me. Um, but I kept this a secret. I kept it a secret. Who are right? you going to tell? Who are I, you going to tell? I kept it a secret, right? We had, we had had talks. This was going on for months, right? And I was always like, hey, man, you know, what's up? What's good? And you were like, I can't tell you, but, you know, you know, what's up? You, you get it. 
And I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I'm keeping a secret. I told my wife about it. This was going on. I felt like two, three months, right, that you have been, like, saving up to go and buy this ring. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was a little while. I definitely put the work in to, so to make I, sure that I was, yeah, paid. Yeah, I, all paid in full and everything. So that felt great. And yeah. then the fact, like, she said yes, too. So, like, that's kind of cool. Oh, that's pretty good. That's cool. <laughs> that yeah. Boy, that would have sucked if <laughs> I come down on one knee. <laughs> She's like, eh, no. Like, all right, I I gotta move. I gotta leave. I don't know. I gotta get out of here somewhere. But no, no, and everything, everything went great. I was, a, I was able to at least surprise her with the fact that like families were in town, so that was cool. So, yeah, I guess Casey had a a, a bad story. I had a great week myself, and I think we have a great episode. Uh, very short intro for us here today, but we have a longer, longer episode. We actually recorded for almost an hour with our first guest. Dave Tilton from the Air Raid Hour. We actually both of our guests were from the Air Raid Hour, partially. Yeah, it's the partially. the two the two good members of the Air Raid yeah. Hour. Um, yeah. So we recorded for almost an hour with Dave. We're gonna hop into the middle of that because uh, it was there was a lot in there. So the the first <laughs> half of the interview might end up or conversation, whatever you want to call it. I don't like calling what we do interviews. But no, we don't interview. It, yeah, it's it's not an interview. <laughs> But the first half of that conversation, we will save that. That that'll probably end up coming out at, at a later date. Um, but we talked with him about Josh Allen, and that because we haven't talked about Josh Allen at all this year or this offseason. Don't ca- don't care. And then we had our ghost producer, Kendall Mursky, the other part of the Air Raid Hour and a bunch of other shows on the Buffalo Fanatics Network. We had him on the show to do a. Uh, performance review because we thought it was time we've been talking about him on the show for a little bit and how he's helped out and uh, call him out every now and then when he doesn't help out as much but we wanted to make sure that he kind of knew where we stood and we wanted to know where he stood with us because i think i think he's embarrassed of us and we talk about that when we have him on so uh, i hope you guys enjoy it i think they're both fun conversations so i guess we'll just hop right into the the middle part of our conversation with dave I think we might be the only Bills podcast uh, in all of Bills podcasts to do something this offseason. We are. And that is, that is not mentioned Josh Allen at all. Like, yeah. I, I would be really interested oh. if somebody wanted to. I don't think anybody really wants to do this. But if, the, if somebody were to go back and listen through all of our offseason podcasts, I don't know if we've mentioned Josh Allen. Like, I don't think I've said his name on the show since the season ended, maybe like a week or two after that. Which I'm gonna pat myself on the back. I think that's pretty impressive. Well, I think it is too. I I actually really enjoyed your guys' um, tailgate draft uh, episode. That was one of my favorites. So like, inspired uh, us to do a little draft themed um, show actually for the air raid hour. After we saw we saw that one, that was fun. Yeah, I want to try and uh, figure out a couple more drafts to do because like we're we're definitely in the the dead part of the off season where there's not a whole lot going on i mean there's otas there was a fight in practice today and we're recording this on tuesday but like that stuff isn't always as pertinent to talk about so i wanted to talk about josh allen because we haven't done that at all this off season and not only do we need to talk about him but josh allen is going to play well on social media too so kind of pump us pump us up a little bit but what I wanted to talk about specifically was what does he need to improve on this year? Because last year, he, we, he also, he's already shown us that he can improve in you know his deep ball game. He can improve his accuracy. He can improve – like he's improved something every single year, if not multiple things. He's coming off a historic year for himself. He's coming off a historic year just for a Bills quarterback in general, like literally the best statistical season of any Bills quarterback ever. What does he need to improve on this year, though? Because he finished second in MVP voting. We got to the AFC Championship game. I know it's not all on his shoulders, but that means there's still more work that can be done. And it's not just one player. Obviously, it's not just him. But what can Josh Allen do individually that's going to make this team better next year? Yeah, I mean, there's not a a ton more he can do, right? I think the biggest jump, that we were going to see. I think the biggest jump that we will have seen in his career when we look back is from year two to year three. And then that we hope that from year three and beyond it's, you know, steady performances like he did last year where 
in a lot of years, that's an MVP season, just mm -hmm. got a little bit outshined by Aaron Rodgers. Now I expect maybe statistically he might regress a little bit for as far as what he needs to work on in his game. I think there's two things. One, he needs to get a little bit better about throwing to his left when he's on the move. Uh, and Kendall did a good job breaking that down. Um, don't, uh, don't. And, don't. and you should, you guys should don't talk you, to him. Don't you, give, don't. don't you give our producer any credit here. No, but that, don't. that is definitely one thing he, when Josh is set and on his dropbacks and when he's set and he throws to the, to his left, he's fine. He does a really good job. It's when he's off balance or on the move to his left is when he gets into trouble a little bit. And then the other thing he needs to like really cut out of his game, which um, has really kind of been a problem for him going back to his rookie year is the sacks he takes when he loses like 15, 20 yards. I mean, there's only a handful of times that it happens in the season, but those plays are killers, right? Like if you get sacked for like a 15 yard loss, like there's almost no coming back from that as good as the bills offense is. And as good as Josh Allen is, those plays are brutal and that he still did that a few times last year. And I believe one of those was in the Colts um, playoff game as well. So he's got to know that, you know, sometimes he's going to just have to throw the ball away, right? Whether that means stepping up in the pocket and then moving to his left or right and getting rid of the ball or just getting rid of the ball by throwing it, you know, to the sideline. He still has a little bit of that, like, never say die sort of hero uh, ball Would you in say him. Arrogance? No, I'm kidding. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. <laughs> but, but really, he did a great job on limiting – from a hero ball perspective, he really did limit like the bad yeah. throws last year. What he didn't, he, which what he needs to still do though, is limit the sacks, right? The, the big loss, the big losses like that we saw in some of those games. So I know the it's not, I know thing, it's easier said than with those is that he, he's already, I think from year two to year three, even he already got better in that department, but that mm -hmm. I, I completely agree that that's still an area that he needs to improve on is, and like you said, not something that impacts like every single game all the like all the time. But when you take those big sacks, it's definitely like a major drive killer or a, a major setback that really puts you at a disadvantage. So that those types of plays can't happen, especially late in the season. And, and one of his strengths is, you know, we've seen is that he's able to get out of pressure and get like shake off contact. Um, he refuses to go down and we see guys like Russell Wilson and Tom Brady over the years when they know they're about to get popped. Like they go, they kind of like, they don't necessarily go to the ground anticipating the sack, although sometimes they do, but they know how to take a sack to where it softens the blow, right? Russell Wilson will like protect himself. He'll lean over. Tom Brady will lean over. Josh doesn't do that. And he doesn't because he's such a big guy and he feels like he's going to be able to get away from guys. But I worry that at some point that something like that is going to, is going to, you know, someone's going to pop him the wrong way. We saw it almost happen last year in that chargers game where he tweaked his knee a little bit. Um, and I'm not saying he should go away from the, the mentality of shaking off contact. Cause obviously he can, but when he's in the grasp and when there's, a lot of bodies flying around around him and you know someone's got his legs like it may be wise for him to just kind of live to see another day to to just kind of make sure he doesn't put himself in harm's way he could he could benefit from every now and then taking the we're, eli manning we're, approach we're, we're nitpicking here obviously right because oh yeah no of course about very much nitpick. maybe before we keep going we should all just say like hey i i think josh allen is good like should we just yes. all go around and say that before we keep going just to kind of save ourselves. Casey, you want to go first? Yeah, no, Josh Allen is great. Um, there we go. <laughs> we're talking about the uh, like nitpicking things, whereas in years That's past, the... we would have been, we would have been like, uh, EJ Manuel can't throw like a, an out route to hey, 15, hey, 15 hey. yards. Like, like those are the, like, those are the things that we were hope Like we yeah. hope our quarterback can throw in like an in breaking 12 yard, like slant, like, like, we don't, we're not talking about that anymore. We're nitpicking down to the, like the finest details now because we want perfection out of Josh. We know it's not, that's not going to happen, but we're just making these observations, right? On but it's also because we can, like he's still only going into year four. If this was year like eight, nine, 10, like at that point, he is who he is. He's still only in year four. So like, even though there's not like that much more that he could actually improve on consistently, 
there's still going to be things that he can improve on. Like his game's still not at its final level yet, which is the one of the craziest things when looking at how he played last year, knowing like that might not be his ceiling because we can still look back and see all of these areas that he could improve in. And even if last year is his ceiling, like that's a damn good ceiling. Yeah, <laughs> like, you I can mean, accept that. <laughs> you, I'd, I'd be, be more I'd than be happy. Exactly. Well, well, it helps a lot that he he just got Sammy Watkins um, back in <laughs> Buffalo. So that that helps. Uh, out. Stephen A. Smith is such Stephen a, a. My God, dude, that guy. I like when he makes fun of the Cowboys, but man, he is he sounds like an idiot sometimes. And that was just another one of those. Like it just shows you how little attention is paid, like to the bit, like as much as the media sucks off the Ravens constantly, like I'm surprised he didn't know that Sammy Watkins went to the Ravens. So it's just a little, a little surprising. To me. I, but like, it seems like he has something like this every single year yeah. or maybe even like every couple months where he's talking about the NFL and it's not the Cowboys or it's not, I guess probably the Patriots would be the other team or maybe the Packers. Like Packers one of those, yeah. It's not one of those three teams that he's personally always talking about. And if he's not talking about one of those three teams, he's probably going to mess up. A, I can't remember who it was the last time, but like he's done this before. It's not like this is the first time that he's just blatantly messed up a player being uh, like in a city. Uh, this I think this might be worse because the Bills already had Sammy Watkins, and ever like it's pretty widely known he doesn't want to go back. Like it, that's yeah. pretty well known. Yeah, Stephen A. was the. Uh... Also, though, the inf- infamous uh, Darcel Marius uh, quote <laughs> from years back that gets replayed from time to time. Uh, another another gem from him. Yeah, good old Stephen A. Smith. He's always he's always getting everything he does right. We all know that. <laughs> all right, Casey, you have, anything, though. you have anything that you want to see Josh Allen improve on? Because even though we all have already said Josh Allen is good, is there something that you think he can improve on? Uh, it goes back to what Dave said. I mean, you're nitpicking. You're nitpicking bad at this point because it's like, I don't know. I I mean, that's the thing. Like, what what are you supposed to say on can you get better? Like, yes, we can talk about, you know, the hero ball and, and calm it down. Like, you don't always have to get the big play. But did he not do that during year two to year three? So, I, I don't know. Uh, the social media sacks are the big ones where he does take the 15 yard sacks and now it's all over social media and they're like, Oh, Patrick Mahomes would never like, yeah, that, that needs to quit, but that, that only needs to quit. Not because it's necessarily hurting the offense, which it is, it's hurting the offense, but it's also hurting my soul to get on Twitter and see, and uh, look at Josh Allen. So um, outside of that, man, just no, there's, there's not, there's not much that I see where I'm like, Hey, let's improve. Yeah, I think you, the, I the difficulty. I think the difficulty with it is like if you ask him to like some of these things that we're talking about, like not taking the big sack and like the hero ball aspect that he definitely de- like he still has that as part of his game, but that's part of the reason that we love him as a quarterback. Yeah, is that you you ask him to kind of cut that part out of his game. That some of that stuff is part of the reason why he's as good as he is because mm-hmm. sometimes he ends up taking that sack, but sometimes it ends up being that he like completely makes an amazing play because he makes a defender miss. He stiff arms a guy. I apologize for my dog, Um, but he's just whining in the background now. Um, But like he just, he makes a big play because he still has that attitude that I'm just going to make every play possible and I'm just going to keep fighting for every yard. And like we still see the highlight and it didn't, it, I mean, he technically fumbled at the end of the play, but the highlight of when he ran over Kyle Van Noy, you ask him to kind of take out, take out that hero ball side of his game. He, that play's gone. Some mm-hmm. of those plays are gone. The Dallas Cowboys play where the, where he reaches into the pile and grabs the ball, that play's gone. So I like, as much as I would like to see him improve on that stuff, I do. I definitely agree that we are nitpicking a little bit here. And I mean, it, it's difficult because as good as he was last year, he could still improve. But like, how does he improve without kind of taking I, away some of his game as well? I think it just comes to show there's a reason why we haven't talked about Josh Allen this offseason. Yeah. He is he is the least of the concerns when it comes to the Buffalo Bills. Um, the return game might be might be a bigger issue. Shout out to the Air Raid Hour every Monday and Thursday. Um, you can find them talking about random things. So 
I don't know. Like, like I'm not worried about the quarterback situation. I'm more worried about the defensive line and and the defense as a whole. To be honest with you, no, I completely yeah, I mean, agree. Yeah, I mean the Josh stuff is like this. This is the classic. You take the good with the bad. Um, yeah, example, right? And like the good outweighs the bad, so you're you live with it by a by I a think wide margin right and, now too. Like and, and, wide, wide. And margin. what we're what we're really trying to do in our heads is like construct like the the perfect quarterback in an imperfect position, right? Like we're like, okay, we want him to have this, this. Like you're basically just trying to create a Madden quarterback that's 99 it's, in every rating. It's the, and it's you, the you, Twitter. You can't, you can't do it. You ever yeah. see the, like the Twitter graphic where it's yeah. like, well, do I would take like this quarterback's mind. I would take this quarterback's arm. I take yep. this quarterback's legs. Like when yep. we're saying like, how can Josh Allen improve? That's pretty much what we're doing because yep. he was so good last year that it like you're just you're. I mean, there's so little that he can actually do you're, you're, in order to get him to get better. You're just saying like, I want him to be this perfect player that it's not possible. You basically make the Twitter graphic and you say, how many of these attributes would you not want want Josh Allen's attribute? And you that's want a, another. That's a good another. question. Could, do you think we could answer that? Like how if, if we're making a Twitter graphic, let's go mind, arm, we'll go like body, and then I'm legs. Taking his body. What, I'm taking what his would body. we what would we not take from Josh Allen in that aspect? Is there any of those? Did I just list four or was it five? That we would not. Take I mean, there's there's other things you probably would want. You'd probably want like leadership. Like you'd want some other of those like soft. Would we soft, not take Josh Allen's attributes. leadership too? No, though? I'm saying you would. You would, yeah. right? Um, like they're like, like you'd have like throwing on the run. You'd have like throwing power. Like you'd have football IQ. You'd have athleticism, right? Like you'd probably take him in almost all of those, right? Like yeah. <laughs> imp- even even improvisation, right? You'd probably take him unless like you could maybe argue that you'd take Pat Mahomes or maybe Aaron Rodgers over Josh in the improvisation um, category. But like, again, you're nitpicking, right? You'd, you'd be totally fine taking Josh in that as well. So it, it's, you're right. Like you, like, I don't know, like if you wanted to put a category of like who would you want in like the two minute drill, like maybe you'd take Tom Brady, like I don't know, right? But like you're like you'd still want Josh Allen in the two minute drill too, so right? It's yeah, like, no, I mean Josh Allen still has the most, what, the most come from behind wins or most game winning drives or whatever that stat is. He's he's right up there at the top over the course of his career. So yeah, it's very difficult. I think that that kind of goes to show what Casey said is right. There's a reason we haven't really talked about him because most of what we talk about in the off season is like, how can this guy get better? How can like, what, what's the problem at this position group? Who do we need to look for to replace this guy? And th- there's just no concerns whatsoever with Josh Allen going into the season. Like there might have been in some aspects of his game in previous years. So it's a, it's a different sort of feeling even more so than last year. Cause like last year there was a lot of confidence in Josh Allen we're coming off a season where he was the second in MVP voting. Like there's, mm-hmm. there is just there is an insane a, amount of confidence in Allen this year, and it's it's all justified. There is, I, I would venture to, I would actually venture to say though that there might be more pressure on him this year than there was last year because last year there was kind of this confidence, like you said, that he could take that big leap, and he did, mm-hmm. and that was great, right? Um, because there obviously there were a lot of naysayers that said he couldn't do it, and and he did make that big leap from year two to year three, but the sustainability now becomes uh, the question, right? Can he prove that 2020 was not a fluke? And I think we all believe he can, but I actually would say that there's more pressure on him to show that 2020 wasn't a fluke and that he's going to be able to sustain that level of performance than there was on him showing that improvement from what he did year two to year three, as fantastic as that year was the, repeatability of that is going to be difficult. So I, I feel like there's going to be quite a bit of pressure on him, especially given what the team did, right? Making it all the way to the yeah. AFC championship game. He could I also still have a great season and not replicate what he did, but it's still a great totally. season. And people still, totally. and people might be like, well, he's just not good enough because it's this and it's this, like people are still going to nitpick in that area. If he doesn't he, throw, he, was it 43 touchdowns, 40 touchdowns, whatever it he was, could throw, he could throw 5,000 yards this year and the bills may lose in the white, like in the division round. And he might have a better statistical year, but the team may not go as far. Like you just don't know. Right. So right. The, the thing that we all just want is for him to put us in those positions to win these games. Right. And like, 
let the chips fall where they may at that point. So he's going to prove or he needs to prove, and I think he will, that 2020 was not a fluke and that he is that type of quarterback. And if he does it this year in 2021, then I think there there's almost like no questions left about him. Right. Yeah. I mean, there, there's still like that little bit of a question, like, can he do it again? Can he show that it wasn't a, a fluke? And once he shows that, then it's going to be hard for people to, to, to bag on a man at that point. I mean, it already is, but like, you're like chopping even more things off that you can say bad about him. Right. Right. I, Casey, it seemed like you had something you wanted to say before we, Oh, said that no, before, no, no, so. no, 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 you're, you're, good. you're, you're good? good. I was just going to say, um, between year two, year three, Blake Bortles had a really good year. Blake Bortles' year three was really, I, really good. No, no, no. Look, no, look, look. I'm, you can, I'm, you can, I hate you can that get comparison. Mad. I hate no, that no, no. comparison, you though. Get, you can get mad. You can get upset, and that is fine. I love Josh Allen. I, I don't think that he's going to take no, the Blake that. Bortles route. But there are people out there on social media that look at it and say, from year two to year three, Blake Bortles had a really good year in year three. Right? From three to four, year four, Blake Bortles – sucked right so a lot of people are comparing josh allen to that right so and as a fan yeah there's like 10 percent in my mind where it's like oh please god don't have a bad year you know what i'm saying because i don't want to hear the blake Bortles comparison but we did this last year real. though we did I'm the same saying, thing last year but we did the same thing last year with trubisky look, all the trubisky look, comparisons last year i don't it was the same exact thing of like oh trubisky Bortles he, Bortles this year was actually his second year the team was bad but he threw for like 4400 yards his and, second year and was it was it the second year to year three and year three he was bad because there year was, three year three he was year actually year one two and three the team was bad Year two, statistically, he did well. It was year four that they made it to the AFC. The team was really good that, yeah. But his really good statistical year, the reason that I hate the comparisons with Josh Allen and Blake Bortles, the like it's because all of Bortles' statistical success, that whatever that year was, year two, year three, I think you said garbage, it was year two. Garbage it was all garbage time. Josh yeah. Allen was making these plays like when it mattered. So like, sure. I, I, that's why I hate that comparison because he's just – they're just trying to throw the ball at that point to not look like they got blown out every single game at that point in his career. So, I, whatever I, you can tell, I don't like the, that comparison whatsoever. Sure, and and I'm not I'm not necessarily keep comparing Josh Allen. I'm not sitting here saying Josh Allen is Blake Bortles 2.0. I'm not saying that. I would never say that. We all know that. However, I do know that there's going to be a clip stating that I said that Josh Allen was Blake Bortles and it's going to go up on no. Twitter thanks to Kendall, our producer. Um, no, but, I don't think Kendall – I think Kendall knows with his performance review coming up. That I, I think he oh, knows good, to man. maybe maybe hold off on some of those, yeah. even though he took a shot at us earlier today, uh, yes. justified one. But, yeah, yeah. But all, all I'm saying is is that it's – it's it goes back to what Tilt said, is that you need to have – um, that sustained success, or you're always going to be compared to these bad quarterbacks who yeah. have a good year, regardless of if it's garbage time or not. Because how many people are going to go back and be like, oh, well, I saw this game. He didn't really achieve it like Josh Allen would. No, they're going to look at the stats, and they're going to read the stats and be like, oh, well, they're very comparable, right? So he does. I think the pressure is on this year for him to go out and have a very good statistical year. And I, I don't think we're going to crush him if say you don't make it to the Super Bowl this year, I don't think that's the point, right? Because th- there's so many different factors that goes into it. Yes. Having a really good quarterback helps. Right. But I mean, what's Josh Allen going to do? Is he going to line up on defense? You know what I'm saying? Like that's a big part of it as well. So no, I think he just needs to go out there and have a really good statistical. Year. It's really hard to make it to the Super Bowl. Like yeah. really yes, hard. It is. Drew, if, Drew if Brees only bar, made it one time. Right. I mean, if so the bar is set at like Josh Allen needs to get to the Super Bowl or, we no. crush him because he wasn't good enough. Like, oh, what does that bad. say about him? Like that, right. that says a, that's, that's actually, I think more positive about him. If that's the criticism of him at this point in his career after next year, like, let's say it's the same outcome where we, the bills get to the AFC championship game, but they don't get to the super bowl. Obviously that's extremely disappointing as a bills fan. However, that's still really positive to be like, well, he needs to get him to the Super Bowl. Like that's the criticism of, of him now is like he's that good where like it's either yeah. Super Bowl or bust for him. I think that's a really positive sign of what like we should be able to expect or be hoping for out of Josh Allen. So I guess the, the best way to close it out because we definitely have gone 
a Too lot longer long. than I think that we've all planned for. Um, Josh Allen, he's he's going into his fourth year. The Bills have, have they, they've already picked up his fifth year option, correct? Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I know that happened a little while ago, and I don't think we even covered that when it happened. We did not. We definitely didn't. Um, <laughs> So we we just okay, don't. about a hundred thousand other people did. So it's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I. Uh, we, that's why we we just do some random stuff it. on this show. But yeah, we, would you would you sign him to an extension this off season, or would you are you in favor of waiting? No waiting. I just feel like it. It's not going to be if you're going to sign him to a ten year deal. The difference of giving him. 45 million versus 48 million to me like to me that's a lot of money but to the bills and to josh allen in his contract over a 10-year period is probably not going to make that much of a difference i would probably wait i would probably wait until after this season but i'm that again i'm nitpicking there too like i would not be mad at all if they gave him which it sounds like that was the plan was that they're going to give him the extension at some point this summer is what it sounded like based on what Bean said before. They would be talking about his extension after the draft is over, and now it's the summer. I'm not going to be mad about it, but let me tell you this. If he gets that extension and doesn't have a good year in 2021, there's going to be a lot of people coming for him. Versus but that's, if if he that's does- also if he gets the Mahomes extension. I, I actually don't expect – I don't expect whenever his extension comes, whether it's this year or next year, I don't expect it to be a, home, a Mahomes extension. I expect it to be similar to uh, – like a four, probably like a four year deal where it's kind like of a Deshaun Watson, yeah. like, like, a four it, like year. what they gave Deshaun Watson, yeah. Um, before all of his stuff, but yeah, yeah. like I, I would expect it to be, <laughs> let's not do that. Um, they could give him, I could, I could see him, I could see them giving him like four years, 180 million or something like that. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, I could, I could I see mean, him doing something like that and just kind of tacking that on. Then they're not locked in for 10, 12 years type of deal. But they could still get an extended after that deal is done because they're gonna. I, I expect whatever deal they end up giving him, it's gonna. It's not gonna replace that fifth year option. It's gonna get tacked on after that. Most likely, yeah, I, I would say yeah. that's. I mean, that's what they did with Mahomes, right? So, like, yeah, not not like not. You're saying like not give him that same deal, but that Mahomes deal is basically like a four or five year deal that they can like get out of after like the first couple years without yeah. really any any monetary like hit to them so um you know the guaranteed money's there obviously but from a cap hit perspective um i think the way they set it up was good it's interesting right because nba salaries guaranteed mlb salaries guaranteed like kurt cousins was kind of like the first one who kind of went the way in the nfl of getting that like fully guaranteed contract and it was for Mm -hmm. a shorter term Maybe you could see Josh Allen get like a four year, $180 million, all fully guaranteed contract. Like, I don't think that's a, a, I don't think that's a smart move if you're the bills, because then why not give them like a 10 year deal with the 180 million guaranteed and then give yourself Josh under team control. Yeah. the It made sense for cousins. Cause you weren't sure if he was going to be the guy for like the future. So I don't know, man. This whole contract thing's fascinating to me. Uh, I'm not necessarily like the, the super cap expert or contract expert, but oh, neither um, are we. But <laughs> <Not> uh, <sure. laughs> but <laughs> but I I think based on what comments have been made, we will probably see the extension happen at some point this summer. I kind of I kind of am hoping that we see it this summer, just to kind of get that out of the way. Um, but mm. that's just me. I know a lot of people have. Um, we've had different thoughts already just on this show, so. Uh, fine. I guess the final word would be Josh Allen is good at football, and uh, even though we are trying yeah. kind of nitpicking, we all think that. Uh, so yeah, no, Casey, that, yeah. we don't have to get a Go Bills from you because we still have more show to come. But let's close it out till with a, a Go Bills. Go Bills! Thanks for having me. Perfect. Go Bills! <laughs> all right, let's welcome on uh, our producer. He's been in the background of every single show that we've done for what? I mean, it's been probably like, Kendall, how long has it been? First of all, Kendall Mursky. He's our producer. Mursky. He also produces the <laughs> Air Raid Hour. You see him live on the Air Raid Hour when he's producing. Um, but he chose to be in the background of our show. So you don't really see him on any of our promo videos. Or now when we're on YouTube, you won't really see him going forward much unless he wants to join as an official guest. 
But how it's been what like three three ish months, I think. Three, I four. think it's been let's see, I started with Fanatics like April first. So yeah, we're getting there. We're get, we're getting there. We're into month three. I yeah, think right, uh, so right, I, right on par, yeah. Well, I think around April third, um, I reached out to you and I was like, Hey, we have some things over here on Napnose Buffalo. We would like to use you as a producer as well. Um, and I think that's when you started coming on was around April 3rd. So join Fanatics April 1st. And then two days later, you join Napnose Buffalo as our producer. Now, I'm not saying that we were the first ones to have you as a producer on anything Buffalo Fanatics related, but the timeline is starting to add up. <laughs> I. I don't know, like it's so funny. I knew we were talking about this, and it's like I am so wildly unprepared for what's about to come. Like I well, know we're talking. That's about not it. great. <laughs> so, as as our producer, you should probably be a little bit more prepared for a lot of stuff. Here's yeah. the thing, though: it's tough to be prepared for something that you're not actually doing so okay so <laughs> wow we have to, okay so here's the thing we have to address this is this whole thing kind of started because kendall didn't want dave and steve to know that oh, he was producing oh how so dare right. you bury so, me like this right. we we have kind of had this like running joke that he's our producer and you'll never yeah. actually see him because he wants to stay in the background exactly but like He's just been our producer. You see any of the content that we put out on social media? Casey and I Kindle don't have does. access I, to, to the Nap Nose Buffalo Instagram or Twitter. Like, I would never. Kendall's been, and here's, I guess, so we're doing a performance review before we actually talk about anything because it's been a couple months. So, like, it you've is. had a chance to work with us. So, you kind of, you've kind of felt things out. We've kind of gotten a feel for how you work. So, real quick, just give us an idea of like, What's it been like for you working with us? Because I, I know we're a little difficult sometimes, but what's <laughs> how's that been for you? Oh, it's been great. You know, just sending gifts every time I get outed, just like it wasn't me every single time. Now I got one in the Rolodex. But I mean, honestly, though, it's been great. Like, this is actually why I joined the team, like why I joined Fanatics. No, pause. You joined specifically for Nat North oh. Buffalo. Yeah. We heard it here first. Okay. Here's, yeah. here's what I need to add. Here's Kindle, what I need to add. Clip it. <laughs> Casey. You, I, please, will you clip that for us, please? You, please can we just me. Agree? Me? Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> you clip everything else. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> what, who do you think? He's really, so he's really pushing this hard. Like, it's yeah, not me. It I'm here's not the, the thing, one Casey. Doing this. Do, you remember, do you remember draft season when you were like, oh, here goes Judge again, pushing his narratives on these players? Uh, this is you guys this. right now. This, this so, is you guys pushing a narrative. Okay, one, don't ever compare me to Steve Mathis. <laughs> I'm way out of his league. Two, Steve pushes a narrative about absolutely everything. Three, I'm telling the God's honest truth right now. God's honest truth. So don't ever and come so at me. Here's the, so and here's why I wanted to do this, because you don't really like taking credit for the work with us. You don't. Because I don't know if that's because you're embarrassed of us or because <laughs> – you just don't like to be seen with us. Like whatever the reason is, we're fine with that. If you want to be a producer in the background, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. But we want to make that's sure okay. that people know the good work that you've done. And so I would have to say, and Casey, I, I would love your opinion on this, but like the, the content that you've put out, being able to find clips, being able to make graphics and whatnot, like the time you've probably spent pulling quotes and all of that, I'm, I'm impressed personally. You know, it's not an easy job. It's not. No, it because, can't be. <laughs> you know, sometimes we talk over each other because we, we always have to talk, you know, when the other's talking. Um, <laughs> so it's hard to find a clip where maybe it's nap ranting or it's me just saying I don't care over and over again. <laughs> so I, I will say that, like, Kindle, the best decision that, uh, well, probably the third best, fourth best decision that we've ever had on this show was to, you know, on April 3rd, ask you to join as our producer. And I just want to say that it is much appreciative. The The very minimum work that you do is appreciated. It's amazing how you guys are just taking the high road right now because <laughs> Nap's over here. What? Is just like <laughs> what do you, wait, no, no, no. Okay, what, what, do, what do you mean? Here's taking the, the high road, we're complimenting you for the work that you're doing. Like, but just, accept, the... just accept 
that like you've done a good job. We'll get to the complaints. Don't if you want us to complain. Oh, we'll no, complain. no, 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 no. Hit I me got with complaints. it. Hit, hit me with the complaints. I, I have some complaints. complaints these too, I want to hear. I want. But I wanted to complaints. make sure we got out in front of all of the well, not all of. It's really just I have one complaint that kind of spans over a couple things, but. <laughs> You've done really good work for us, so we appreciate that, and we want yeah. it to be known that like well, everything uh, that I'm, you're doing for us. I know you're very like forward facing with the air raid hour, but we sure. want people who listen to Napnos Buffalo to know like you're doing really good work for us too. Well, you keep saying really good, and like it's just it's mediocre. But who else is going to do it? <laughs> That's so. true. I I work two jobs. Casey he he's working all the time. He's got a kid on the way. Like. We don't personally have time for we that. Do not so, have like, time. we really appreciate the fact time. that you've taken over the last couple months of all of that. Awesome job on that. Now, <laughs> do you have any other things that you wanted to no. like, give him no. a, a approval on? No, no. And I, I'm not the type of person who gives my approval to a lot of people. Um, and I would say that if I'm ranking you out of a 10, I'm giving you a four, which is not bad. Ooh, it's not, oh. it's not, it's not bad. Like people will hear that rating and be like, that's really awful, but it gives you it room, <laughs> room to improve. And I think that's very important is having room to improve. You know what um, else has room to improve in eight? There's still yeah, room so, to get to 10. So I, I would <laughs> definitely give you a higher score than that, but I have to, I have to kind of get my complaints out also before I give you my final score. Um, oh. And I think my my complaint sir, kind of goes around the fact that like we've we kind of sought you out, we brought you onto the team, and we're very thankful that you've been a part of the team and helping us out. But then you just go and you take shots at us on Twitter constantly, like constantly, like constantly. Like I, I oh, so I actually screenshotted a couple of these so that oh, I could here we go. Up. Pull got them up. I gotta go find right. these because Kindle. there was a couple yeah. that really stuck out. If if I'm being honest, um, but the one you know, where you uh... there's, there's <laughs> one where I think it was uh, Bruce exclusive was saying something about doing solo pods, and you were I mean you didn't even hide the fact like from the Nat Knows Buffalo account you logged on you saw his tweet and then you said at Kyle Naps couldn't keep up in the solo pod game sad. Can you can you just like walk us through the <laughs> thought process of that one when you That's, when you type? I didn't that know out. about that one. I didn't it's know about funny that because one. Oh, yeah, no, I didn't also you in didn't that. know about this one because it wasn't me. <laughs> I I'm gonna keep going right, to this next one, next one. Next one. Next um, one. I had a, I had something like a, a week or two ago. Or I guess it was it was when Matt Perino was on. So that's a couple of weeks ago at this point. Yeah, good show. And by the way. I was, was talking really about. Show. Yeah, we told you that we appreciated all the work you did setting that up afterwards. So once again, thank you. But we also talked about there was one part where you were like, hey, can I put this out as a clip? And it was me saying that I don't necessarily like the, the Super Bowl jabs, the four Super Bowl losses. Like that doesn't hurt me as a fan personally. Casey and we popping talked in about, with the Scott like, Norwood. <laughs> let's let's not put that out as a social clip. Like it's it's OK. We don't have to do that. And. Correct. What do you do? Is at Kyle Knapps a fake fan? You put that out. I I will say Kyle got attacked on, on Twitter by a bunch of 40-year-old males saying, <laughs> hey, you're not a real fan, and it hurt him. It, it, and, of course, who's he going to talk to? He's going to text me, and I'm be like, yep. look, man, don't let them get to you, right? And this was your fault, obviously. <laughs> And then, so there, there was, I believe there was one more main one. And so the, those two, it was just direct shots at me. They were the next one. The next one was a shot at both of us. And I just, I, I got to find took a, I, I got to try and like, notice Casey. <laughs> I, I took a selfie um, and the light flashed. So everybody's <laughs> going to see that. So if anybody's wondering, Oh, where is this one? There was one where you just like you just called us losers. No, I can't no, no, find no, no. it right now. You, oh, here we go. It oh, was it was Steve because Smith. it was because no, no, no. This was no, this um, is earlier. That was recent. I didn't even I didn't even dislike that one. Oh, I kind of, that one was fair because we don't really do a whole lot of prep. We just show up and talk. This one it was for tilts rankings of the biggest rivalries or whatever, or like it was something something along those lines, and. We got ranked like fourth or fifth on his list. And so I said the fact that 
Casey and I can't even get number one on a list of the only thing that we do well. Did the like the palm face emoji. And here comes Kendall, just a couple of losers directly from the Napnos Buffalo Twitter account. Oh, so that, that's think- my complaint is that, yes, you've done great work, but you just love taking shots at us. I just want to hear you say you've enjoyed taking shots at us on Twitter from behind the veil of the nap nose buffalo account because and granted they're funny like i (laughs) i I have gotten a laugh out of when you've done some of them Uh, just just admit that you enjoy it i can admit that i enjoy watching the nap nose buffalo account make fun of nap nose buffalo (laughs) there's a little dynamic going on and it is funny it is funny, but I, I can't take accountability for this. I just I just can't. I know Casey tweeted at me. He said the best ability is accountability. And I owned up to that. That is true. There's no arguing with that. But I can't take accountability for something that I'm not responsible for. Okay, so I guess what, what we have to figure out is where do we go <laughs> from here? Because what we have to figure out is who the hell has your work. password. It's you. We gave you the password. <laughs> it's you. you. Like, stop lying. Please, I swear to but God. like, yeah, like <laughs> we did, but we have to figure out because you've done really good work for us over the last well, couple so, of months. One, so, I, so. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, it's a four. good work. I it's think it's four. more along the lines of like a six point five. See, I'll take so, so, like, that's, that's so, respect. You're better than average. I like that. Definitely I was about to say, grow, but better than average. <laughs> but like. Where do we go from here if you don't want to be associated with us? Like you're embarrassed of us. Here's the thing, too. The funny part is you're saying, like, I don't want to be on screen. And it's like, you're a podcast. I would only be on screen for your, like, 45-second wow. promos. Wow. No, but, like, you won't even admit that you're a part of this. I Every mean, single time you do something and we call you out because, of course, we're going to call you out if you're doing <laughs> this, you try and say it wasn't you. Just own up to it and take credit. And, like, what <sighs> – my score will go up. I'll probably shoot it up to like an 8.5 if you just start taking credit for your own work. But what does that 8.5 get me? Does it get me more screen time? Does it get me more thoughts on Napoleon's yeah. Buffalo? What does it, it get might. me? Tell me what I need to do to help you. Help me help you. You need to take okay. credit for your work. <laughs> this is this is what you need to do. Um, you need to text Dave and, and Steve right now and say that. <laughs> And then listen to me. you have to say exactly what I tell you. Say that my workload on the Nap Nose Buffalo podcast has gotten <laughs> too much, and I think that I'm just going to work from them from now on. If you do I think that, you gotta just choose. I low key I, really want to do that. That would be yeah, no. We really want funny. you to do that too please, because we want you to just please. strictly be our producer. <laughs> please, I don't. I don't know what it can I have become to do a three man do show. that right now. Oh, I don't know man. what I have to do to get you to do that right oh, now, man. but I'll do it. The what thing do you is, to say? I don't think they would respond fast enough because I want to do this and I want to get their response recorded right now. So, but I don't know if I can guarantee I will, that response. I will give you. Quickly. I will say, let's do this. Let's give him because we do have other things that we got to talk about. Let's give him twenty four hours. You send that that text within twenty four <laughs> hours, and you have to report back to us with a final decision of yes, are you with us or are you going to just you, continue you? to act like you're not, and then you're <laughs> technically against us, and. We still would love for you to keep creating our content for us because, like I said, we don't have all of the time to do that. But we're going to call you out and like we'll we'll just become enemies if you're not going to decide that you're with us. <laughs> oh, he hit it. That's for YouTube. That that was that, for YouTube. I saw that, Casey. And he's ready to clip it. He's ready. I'm ready. <laughs> and now I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> so you have 24 hours. Oh, boy. Once, 24 hours. We'll, 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 24 hours. Once the show goes out Friday. So once you put the show out Friday, then you have 24 hours to let us know what you're deciding. Okay. Casey, I need to know. No, that is, that is perfectly fair. Casey, I need to know if I do this, what can my score bump up from or what can it bump up to from that four? So if you text them and you say that, that four, I, because I'm going to think it's, I personally will think it's hilarious that if you do it, if you do it right <laughs> now, it's really if you, funny. If you text it right now, right, and then you screenshot the text 
and you send it to the group chat that me and me and Nap are in right now, um, I'll I'll bump you up to an eight point seven. Ooh. We could even here's the I, here's this. We could even consider talking about like a a pay increase. A pay because I know we don't talk about pay or anything like we that. <laughs> but, like, but it's but we it's could rude. talk about a pay increase yeah. on this show, not on their show, on this show. This show. Do they pay you? I you don't mean, have to answer that. You don't have to answer that. <laughs> it's 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 not it's not good to talk about that. We we shouldn't yeah. talk about that. See, we can talk see? about that offline. <laughs> yeah. I'll I'll triple it. <laughs> That's, I mean, that's an official offer. Yeah, I official believe, offer. can I get that in writing? You don't have you, to. This is this is officially oh, this is, in. That's the, it's recorded. binding. It's it's yeah. uh, it's going to be out on YouTube. Cool. It's going to be everywhere. I, I actually don't even think we've officially let you know, but all of what we've done so far, it's out on YouTube now. We're, yeah. Like this is all going out on YouTube. Wait, everything. Oh, oh, as not of previously. The last, like, gotcha, that would be gotcha, way too much last, work like, for 15, you to put together. Right, it's just this show and on, you're going to be putting like it all out I wouldn't like to figure that out right now, that I got to go yeah. backlog and get all the podcasts from the past three months. Yeah, no, so, no, 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 no. Just no. Here, here moving forward. So I need you to stop what you're doing. Go ahead and send that text real quick. <laughs> I low-key really Send it. it. As you're sending send it, it, we'll start We'll start talking we'll start, about actual we'll start. stuff because yeah. we do have to get into that. and. I want to get your thoughts on the actual podcast of like, what are your thoughts on the Julio Jones trade? And this is something that we kind of talked about before we started recording. We don't I'll necessarily want to keep talking about Julio, but we have to because yeah. it's, it's the news right now. And it's the news in the AFC just as a whole. Like yeah. how does that affect X team? And obviously for us, it's how does it affect the bill? So I guess Kendall, while you're doing your thing, getting that text out to, to Tilt and Steve. Casey, how yes, do you please. think this trade for Julio to the Titans affects the Bills, if if at all? I, I don't care. They're they're going to steal power run and go play action and try to hit deep shots. Like I, I don't I don't care. Like and honestly it's it's not my team, so I don't care to begin with. But I was never high on Julio Jones coming to Buffalo to begin with i get the whole trade everybody away now and you get a a premier player it's like I, I don't care you know what i'm saying like i don't julio jones does not interest me like it does for other people and i don't know if it's because it is a big time player julio jones is a big time player i will never take away what he's done in his career and what he can continue to do in his career right but is it just because he was available that bills mafia was like let's get him or is it because they wanted the player the actual player and i think it was a little bit of both him going to tennessee was great for say my friends here in tennessee who actually follow the titans like they're ecstatic right but in the back of my mind in my gut i have a feeling that julio jones is going to see a a big like down year this year right and there's going to be some people in bills mafia who's like i told you we shouldn't have traded for him but they were the ones who were pushing the narrative. So I personally don't see this as a, oh, my God, Tennessee is going to be a uh, uh, a Super Bowl. They're going to the Super Bowl this year. Like, I don't see that as the move because they're a run first type Clip of offense. Clip that, Kendall. He just said Tennessee's going to the Super Bowl. Clip that, Kendall. <laughs> no, please don't. Um, but, like, I don't. <laughs> I don't see. Yeah, I don't see them going to the Super Bowl. Like, yes, John Robinson, the GM, has done an amazing job of acquiring talent and all for less than a first-round pick, which is amazing. But they are a run-first offense. They're going to run the ball first, and then they're going to do you know random things with uh, Brown and, and Green. So, or not Green, I'm sorry, uh, Julio Jones. So, I mean, it just – I don't care. I think that's the point I'm trying to make is I don't care. I don't see them as the big Super Bowl contenders. Um, I still see Kansas City above Tennessee, hands down. In so fact, I- Indiana is above them in my mind, and I, I, I'll say it. In, in Indianapolis. Yeah. I, so I, I don't think that they have to be the automatic Super Bowl favorites for it to matter. I get where you're coming from of just like yeah. not caring whatsoever because that's kind of like your thing on the show. Yeah. If, like you just <laughs> don't that's care. Fair. Um, that's fair. But I, I think it's enough that people should care. Like it's not like this trade doesn't affect anything whatsoever. It's not like this trade doesn't matter. Like this trade has an effect on the bills still. The trade has an effect. Did did you just get the text sent through? <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, I guess we're gonna have to pause the Julio talk. No, you keep going. It's not even. You keep going. It's not worth looking at. All yeah, right. Well, not, I guess we'll have to not. we'll have to talk it's about just... that later then. But it like the trade makes their offense better. 
the team itself has a bunch of other issues with their defense losing a lot of players. They yeah. still don't really have a right tackle. Like they still have issues they're, as a team. So I'm with you that I don't think it makes them like the automatic. Oh, they're they're the Super Bowl contender team. I think they're still behind the Bills in terms of that. But you're lying to yourself if you don't think this makes that team a like a bigger contender than they were before. Sure, I mean, if you're to an offense that has Derrick Henry and AJ Brown, it matters. That makes a big difference. Those are two wide receivers that are big, physical guys. Sure. And if if Julio is healthy, which he gets, he gets a bad rep for not being healthy, but he just plays through everything. He right. rarely actually misses extended time, and he produces. He yeah, just and produces. I, and so I'm not I think taking away this makes the difference. Injury. And it makes their offense so much harder to guard because you got to worry then, about two big play wide receivers on the outside, not just AJ Brown. And then, Oh, it's Corey Davis, but now it's AJ Brown and Julio. And then you also have to worry about trying to stop Derrick Henry. It matters. It makes them a better team, like a much better team. Anytime you trade and you add a premier player to a team, yes, it's going to make your team better. But at the same time, 11 and 5 is what they're going to end. I'm sorry, 11 and 6. Oh, you know what? I'll be generous. 12 and 6. They'll end their season 12 and 6 and they'll get booted in the second round. So, we'll yeah, edit I don't, that. 12 I don't and five. care. Is it 11 and 5 still? No, no, no. no, no you that'll just be... added up to 18 games. Yeah. That's all. We'll edit that's that. That's okay. Math wasn't math isn't Casey's thing. 12 and 5. Whatever the <laughs> whatever the whatever. Okay, let me start over then if we're going to edit it. <laughs> So twelve and five, their their record's still going to be twelve and five. They're going to get booted in the second round. It doesn't matter, right? I get that it made them a little bit better. That's fine, right? But is Julio Jones going to go play, you know, nickel corner? Is he going to play outside corner? Like, like what is what is going to happen? Like, it's awesome that we're adding a lot to this offense that was already a really good offense. But at the same time, I don't care, and I don't think the Bills should worry about them. Now, should they blow them away? No, no, you should not just blow them to the side and be like, I'm not going to worry about Tennessee. That game that we play in Monday night in Tennessee, that should be an awesome game, and everybody should go through that, right? And and Tennessee should go – or uh, Buffalo should go into that game saying, hey, these guys were said to be the Super Bowl contenders, right, going into the offseason, right? We need to blow them out of the water, right? I still think they should have that attitude. But at the same time, I don't care. Tennessee does not worry me. Even with them adding Julio Jones, does not worry me. They don't have a pass rush, and they don't have a secondary. So I don't really care about them. Cool. Uh, Julio can put up 300 yards, but hell, if they don't have a defense, so the fuck can we? So, I mean, shit. Like, who cares? I said it. Edit that So, out. So where where are you at, Kendall? Because I think Casey has very clearly made his stance. Like he, We all know where Casey stands. He doesn't care. Because it doesn't in the long run, it's not going to matter. Like for their Super Bowl run, is where it seems like you stand, right, Casey? Just a yes or no there. Yeah, I'll die on this hill. Okay, all right. (laughs) And I'm definitely more on the side of they were they were still a good team, but this this improves where their team is at. I I don't think it makes them better than the Bills, but they are they're definitely going to be like a force to be reckoned with. Like they'll have a say in how the season plays out they're not going to be a difficult out despite anything else like they're still going to be a good team they're a well-run organization they're a well-coached team they they, they're a good team so adding julio matters where are you on this kendall i'm probably in between you guys the the fact that you said that you think it makes them better but it doesn't make them better than the bills that's where i align with you but then i'm back with casey where it's like he's saying this doesn't improve their defense. Like they lost so much on defense this year. Yeah. Julio Jones is a great player. You're going to get better in that way just because you have him, but you know, he's, yeah, he's just another receiver on that team. I agree. Like changing him out for Corey Davis. Like that's a clear upgrade. Like he is better than Corey Davis. And we saw them obviously, honestly, they're probably going to have the same offense that they had last year. And they're just going to replace Corey Davis with Julio Jones's production. And that probably will be better. But is it to the point where they're now Super Bowl contenders? Probably not. They're probably more just like, I would guarantee, I don't, I shouldn't guarantee anything. Uh, Make a guarantee. guarantee Make a guarantee. Come on. You were about to do it. Make a guarantee. I was about to do it. I need to think about the AFC 
I don't think they're going oh. to win the AFC South. I think they have a very, very good shot of getting okay. a wild card. I, I, Casey, was it you who said the Colts are still better than them? Yeah, you said the Colts. Yes. Yeah, I agree yeah, with that. Yeah. I, I 100%. Are yeah, I 100% Thank still you. agree Thank with you. that. Um, even with like whatever we all think about Carson Wentz, I still think they're better than what the Titans are right now. They're just a better team holistically. Um, but I think they have as good a chance at the wild card as anyone else in the AFC. Like they're still a good team. They did lose some pieces on defense, but yeah, like the addition of Julio Jones will make their offense much harder to defend. It's going to be about if they can ever get stops. Yeah. They're going to, I mean, they're going to have to try and outscore yeah. everybody or they'll play ball control with their Henry. And that's, but right. like, that's where it comes down to like, they, they now have like clear cut. They can try and run up the score on you on offense or they can try and just control the entire game with Derrick Henry if he's rolling, because obviously we know he has some games where he's not. Um, yeah. But and their defense is going to be suspect. So mm-hmm. it's I think it's going to come down to how well does their defense step up and does Ryan Tannehill continue to play the way he's played right. during the regular season? Because he hasn't necessarily played well during the postseason over the, I think, two or three whatever games that he's played in the postseason yeah. with Tennessee. But during the regular season with them, when he started, he's been a very good quarterback that doesn't get enough respect. Correct. So and it's going to be interesting. I think where, where you will see the the biggest improvement to their offense um, is is going to be in the two-minute drill, right? Because mm. now you have two different people, and, and you said it best, Kendall, when you were talking about Corey Davis. You no longer have – Corey Davis was hit or miss. Sometimes he would perform and it'd be awesome. And he, he really went all out. Other games he would have drops. He wouldn't really mm-hmm. show up. So now you know for a fact I've got a Hall of Famer on one side and you've got somebody who in all accounts can be a Hall of Famer one day on the other right. side. So now you have this awesome offense. So in the two-minute drill, when you're going down the field, who are you double covering, right? Well, you, you have to double cover Julio or you just have to. Because we saw what he can do in his career. He put up 300-yard game against Carolina a couple of years back. It, was, it wasn't even that long ago that he did that, right? Mm-hmm. So you have to cover him. But then again, that leaves, you know, Brown on the outside, like, just eating. So two-minute drill is going to be the biggest improvement that you see in their game. So I guess to kind of bring this full – I guess not even full circle, but to wrap it back around to the Bills. And I'm going to pose this question for you, Kendall, because I think you're probably going to be smarter in this area than either me or Casey. Uh, eh, despite sure. being the man behind the curtain for us, you probably are going to be the, have the better, more well thought out answer on this. Let's how do see. the Bills defend this offense? Like, wh- how do they go about defending AJ Brown on one side, and then also defending Julio, and then also worrying about the stopping the run with Derrick Henry? Because even though they before, and I know it's only one game, but they had to worry about AJ Brown and then Jonu Smith, and yeah. then. Derrick Henry, it's still different when you have two just crazy good wide receivers because mm-hmm. it changes. You're not the the linebackers have different uh, have a different focus and whatnot, and then you have more pressure on the CB two, which we all know that's been a very large topic of conversation. So, how do the yep. Bills go about attacking this when they play the Titans this year? Uh, I think they have to look back at how they defended the Titans last year because obviously we know that game was just extremely concerning as a bills fan that was probably the worst game of the season it was about uh, as big of a train wreck as any of our podcasts <laughs> that's, that's fair yeah yeah so i think they have to go back and look at that and specifically in that game what i took away is they they did a great job defending derrick henry but because of that they left a lot of people open in the secondary i think that game obviously we had a ton of people missing i think mm-hmm. uh Teron Johnson got subbed out for Cam Lewis, I think, in that game. And Cam Lewis gets injured. Teron Johnson back in. I think Levi might have been out. Josh Norman was in that game. He got stiff We know Josh Norman. He was definitely in that game, yeah. (laughs) But, no, we were not doing well when it came to coverage in that game. Let's let's pause. I'm from (laughs) – I live in Tennessee. I'm from Tennessee. I live here. And everybody knows I'm a Buffalo Bills fan. When Josh Norman (laughs) – had his soul snatched from him by Derrick Henry. Um, I got so many pictures 
of that just one play that I had to turn I had to turn my phone off because I was right. like he's he's not even a starter guys I don't know what to tell you like yes it was a good play <laughs> like good job Derek Henry you <laughs> threw a man like that's normal for you but Tennessee man they were so proud of that one moment and know, of course right? they won the game so what am I supposed to what am I supposed to there's say? nothing like, yeah. I, yeah, I, I, just, what can you say at that point you just take take the bruising and move forward I just double I just double tap the picture and move on it's like thank you <laughs> thank you guys appreciate you. No, but uh, getting getting back to like how they're actually going to defend it, like I think honestly a big blessing is the fact that they really don't have a replacement for Jonu Smith. Obviously, we know how deficient we can be defending tight ends. Right now, their tight ends are Anthony Ferkser and Goff Swaim. Um, probably Jeff Swaim. They I'm do sure seem to be pretty high on Ferkser. Is it Ferkser? They seem to be pretty high on him. Had, but that he had some good moments because I follow some of the players on. On Twitter, so they're always going to talk up their own guys. He he did have some good moments in the in the regular season. Uh, I, I watch a lot of Tennessee games. Like right. I'm, it's it's here when I'm. Casey not actually the Bills. follows the Titans more than the Bills. That's not Fun true. Fact. That's not, that's not true at all. No, he did have some really good games. I think my biggest question um, for you, Kendall, is like, are we bringing down a safety to double you know double double cover Julio? Are we bringing that in? What? How are we? How are we doing that? Are we just going to leave him alone on an island with Trey? But the thing about that is, we play. You know, then who? Then you're. You know leaving, what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, you're leaving Brown. Yeah. But it, it it goes to that. It's a like, dealer's you, choice. You put more respect on Julio's name because of who he is, right? right? And I guess it. I guess it goes on how's the season going, right? Yeah. Because we we could get lucky and and it could come true of what I said of Julio having a down year, and then mm-hmm. you're not really worrying too. Well, you're still kind of worrying. It's a Hall of Famer, you know what I'm saying? So like, like what are we doing? Are we bringing a safety down? Are we trying to move our our linebackers are not that good in coverage? We know that to be the truth, you know what I'm saying? So what what are we doing? How are we doing that? I could definitely see a world where we're not bringing a safety down like definitively, like he's playing literally near the offensive line and doubling off the bat. I could see a world where we're playing like cover ones or cover three type defenses. And one of those safeties is dropping down into a robber role into the middle of the field. Um, the only problem is with that is that's only taking away the middle of the field. And like I said, their, their tight ends aren't great. They're not something to be super afraid of. So it really only takes away like those in-breaking routes from an A.J. Brown and a Julio Jones. Um, I and don't know. Ma- that we might just leaves the over-the-top stuff of it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. On the which boundary, is, which is the over the scary, top yeah. stuff. So we could just lay back in our quarters, cover four kind of coverage, like we played uh, against the Chiefs, just keeping everything in front of us. But I don't think that's the way to play the Titans because – they have such a good run game. You can't allow everything to stay in front of you because then you're going to let Henry eat up six yard gains on the regular. So there has to be some sort of middle ground. And I think, I think Casey, you're probably closer to it saying like, we're going to bring a safety closer to the line of scrimmage to sort of bracket either Brown or Julio and leave one of the other guys, whether it be Poyer or Hyde deep. So, and that, that leaves the, the question like, Poyer is a better tackling safety, right? So you kind of you bring him down close to the line of scrimmage, and you have Hyde out as more of a coverage, you know, safety out there. Uh, I think that's honestly the way they need to go about it. Um, and I get like I'm over here talking about how it's going to be so hard to defend. This is what every single team is going to have to worry about when it comes right. to it. Not just the Bills on Monday Night Football, um, but I still stand by my point that I don't see them as a contender because they can do all that. If they shut down, if you shut down Derrick Henry, right, which is a tall task, all this is a tall task, and I understand that. But if you can shut down, if you can shut down Derrick Henry, and it leaves them open, but you get one or two plays, right? You get one or two plays uh, on their on their offense, and you kind of put them in the situation where they have to go away from the run, right? They have to abandon the run, and they don't want to. They never want to abandon the run. But if your offense can make them abandon the run on their offense then yes, you can shut them down. And that might that might be the case. And it goes back to the whole um, Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, right? If you shut down their run, which is a tall task, yes. I'm, I'm emphasizing that is a tall task to shut down their run offense. If you can shut that down, then you're leaving the ball in Lamar's hands, and I will take that every single day. It's, I think just, it's still different when you're talking about Lamar throwing Julio the ball Jones. and Tannehill throwing the ball, even just those yeah. two, because Tannehill's had I success, know. tons of success throwing the ball over the last – year and a half, two years. So it, it is very, very different. 
Yeah, it's funny, though, because you look back at the game last year, Henry went 19 for 57 against the Bills. Like, we we did technically, I would call that shutting down Derek shutting Henry down the run, for yeah. three yards a carry. But if you overcommit and you overcompensate to defending that run and Derek Henry, you're leaving things open on the back end. So it's about finding that balance. And I, I think yes. bringing Poyer closer to the offensive line, he doesn't have to be like a run stopper all game kind of thing. But if you bring him closer to the offensive or the line of scrimmage and allow him to play more of a read and react role and kind of just sit in the middle of the field, it could give us that best of both worlds kind of thing on defense. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting for sure to see how they how the Bills decide. And like Casey said, every other team yeah. that has to play the Titans for the for that matter, for how sure. they decide to attack playing defense against all the weapons that they have on offense. And it'll be interesting to see if their defense can step up like yeah. to help their offense out a little bit too. Because if if their defense does kind of put things together and, and get everything figured out and they play well, that changes the entire dynamic of everything. But that, I mean, that's that's a whole nother conversation. Kendall, we appreciate you for coming on. Um, we we definitely appreciate you taking the time to have the performance review just out in the open with everybody, <laughs> considering the fact that well, you're embarrassed of us. Um, so cool. hopefully, hopefully we you give us the chance to to have you actually on the show and uh, forward facing a little bit more often. <laughs> uh, but keep doing awesome work for us and I guess for the air raid hour. Sure, <laughs> um, I'll let you know what they say. Yeah, I, it's you know what if they're not if they're not going to pay you more than us, then it I mean I like told it, them it, that the Casey's going to triple the offer. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, so falls I, in their court. Falls in their court. Yeah, Casey, you got anything left before we close this out? Uh, no, Kindle, as always, you are a, a huge star with Buffalo Fanatics. You really yeah. are. You're very talented. You're very smart. Um, all jokes aside, like you, you are awesome. And you have a very, very, very bright future. So I appreciate Thanks, you man. taking the time to come in front of the camera and talk to us. Of course. And now anytime. that everybody knows that, that, that they can find you here <laughs> with the content that we put out, where else that can everybody find you? On Buffalo Plug Fanatics. your shows. <laughs> Plug oh, your other God. shows. Here we go. So I'm on four nights a week. I got air raid hour every Monday, Thursday. We start at, no, God, I was going to say 5 p.m., but that's 5 p.m. Western, 8 p.m. Eastern. And then we got the film session with Clay. Clay's been killing it um, on the film session. And obviously that stuff that's dropping tonight on Instagram uh, at West Her. But we go live Saturdays at, uh, what is that, 6 p.m. Eastern uh, for our film session. And then on Sundays, we go live at 7 p.m. Eastern for the writer's room. Uh, writer's room, you guys might not be, you know, privy to it. Uh, but it's it's going to start happening more and more through this off season. We're going to do it every Sunday night at 7 p.m. And we're going to talk about whatever was posted on Buffalo Bills or Buffalo Bills, Buffalo Fanatics blog.com or Buffalo Fanatics.com. The, and the Buffalo Fanatics. The Buffalo, the Buffalo I always Fanatics. forget that because it is the Buffalo Fanatics. There's no one yeah. else. Um, no, but really check out our work at the Buffalo Fanatics.com. The writers, I, in my opinion, we don't get enough love from outside Fanatics. I think oh, Fanatics yeah. does a great job like pumping up the writer's room, but I think we deserve some more love. I think a lot of us, you know, we put a lot of pride into our work, and a lot of us are like, oh, butt hurt. We're not getting more views. But I think we all deserve You know those what? Views. If you would just accept the fact that, like, accept the credit for the work you're doing, maybe, maybe. Yeah, you're that right. Would be it. It, it, yeah, maybe it's more of just a uh, <laughs> not not being uh, accepting enough or uh, yeah, just, just grateful take the credit enough. when we give grateful. you the credit. No, you guys, <laughs> like, the writer's room does awesome, awesome work, though. So. Like the writers right. at the Buffalo uh, Buffalo Fanatics, the writers' room, like all those shows that you're on, I I don't know how you have the time to do all of that. I, all right, you want you general. guys want to know? You guys want to know what's good? I don't have a job. Buffalo <laughs> Fanatics is my job right now. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get work in football. I literally went to school for sports management. I'm trying to start working in football, but it's a tough road. So, so this the, is this is how I'm getting my stuff out there. How I'm showing my football acumen and I'm helping Buffalo fanatics along the way. Cause I love the team atmosphere around here. It's really great. And it it's just been, it's been awesome. Like I know I'm putting in like crazy work, but it's because I have the time. Like I really, I do have the time. So 
I guess yeah, the fact that it. that you you're trying to get like other jobs, it would be like a full time job job. I guess that kind of explains why you don't want to be known as the guy who's helping out with Nat Nose Buffalo. <laughs> so, don't put it like that. Yeah, <laughs> let's let's get it go Bills then, and and I guess that's a great well, way to close well, it out here. Unless you well, got one more one, thing. One more thing. Um, uh, how does it feel to follow in my footsteps uh, with Clay? <laughs> I can't believe you did like, that. I love that. You just brought like, this up. Like, no, I, know I, have, I know I have big shoes, right? And, like, filling in. When they asked me, when Clay was like, Casey, we, we have to replace you. Um, who do you want? I said, Kendall. Kendall is so smart. I need Kendall to be on there. If there's one person to replace me, it better not be Steve. And it has to be Kendall. And, and he said, you know what? follow-up question. How many shows did it take for Clay to forget that uh, Casey was on the show previously? Oh God! Yes, correct. Yeah, that one too. <laughs> Do you want an honest answer? <laughs> oh, number right one. Away. <laughs> sure. Okay, that's fine. All right, I guess no. that's perfect. All no, right, man. He go bills. He, uh, <laughs> no, man. He he definitely liked having you for sure. I was just like, that's why he didn't invite you back. I reached out to Clay and I was just like, dude, what's going on? Like, I want to do film session. I like literally, I saw you guys doing film session. Like Casey, I love the film sessions You're you welcome. were doing. I tweeted. I tweeted at you and Clay after like the first one. And I was like, yo, you guys should include some like negatives on these guys. And you guys were like really responsive. And you actually like responded back to me before I was even with fanatics. And so it's been awesome replacing you. Not because you've been bad. Like it's been fun. It's been fun to be on the film session, but like low key, I think we're actually going to start bringing on guests for a film session like we're gonna start incorporating that more so if you want to get back man if you want to get so, back in clay's I, in clay's if you want to be, you be I, a guest on your old show yeah my <laughs> that's old what's show so, funny about so, it. so every 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 show that i've ever had that's gone on youtube has been canceled after like two episodes like me and steve Not we lasted one. one we lasted one episode um me and clay we lasted two um but here's the thing like like you replaced you replaced me and i'm glad you did Right, because you are so smarter than me. You're you're so much more talented than I am when it comes to all of this. I mean, don't you do a great that, job. You no, 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 no. Shut up. I don't give compliments. You, <laughs> he just you, said, he just said you're so smarter than him. Like you can't exactly. tell him no after so, that. Wow. So yeah. So <laughs> I and and you're doing you're doing a great job, and I'm I'm not mad at it. I think it's hilarious. We obviously poke fun at it all the time, but I, I think it's great. Y'all are doing the Lord's work, and I do. I don't get to catch it because I am busy. Um, now with everything that's going on, uh, but I do get to catch the replays on it, and you do a great job. You and Clay both. Clay is a wizard. You're he's, a wizard. Clay. He certainly yeah, is. Yeah, you guys do great work. All right, let's close it out. Kendall, give us a go, Bills, and that's how we'll close it out. We'll kind of wrap it around. All right, go Bills. Oh, you know this is going to be live <laughs> now, so you get your way. Oh, that bothers me. All right, Casey, do it. <laughs> Go Bills go chicken, bills. is that what's going on? Go Bills. You go Peace Bills. <laughs>